Hey, Larkin Rose here, and I thought I would do a short video about the second episode of The Anarchists, which just came out on HBO. Um, I'm sure that lots of anarchists are going to complain even more, like they already did, about, oh, this doesn't make us look all that good. Um, and I wanted to point out a few things that are kind of obvious if you think about them, but might not be obvious to voluntarists or to anybody else if you haven't thought about it. If you have a, a group or an organization or an event and there's a thousand people at it and 995 of them get along great and they talk and have their fun time and have like stimulating discussions and, you know, friendly meetings and all that stuff and five of them are sort of bonkers and, and some drama happens... If there's somebody there reporting on it, the drama is what gets attention, just kind of automatically, because that's that's the story. Because it's a boring story to say, look at all these people sitting around having these nice, friendly conversations. Here's some people sitting around having a nice, friendly conversation. Here's some other people sitting around like, well, that's boring as hell. You focus on what happens. Um, and it's sort of a subset of, of the if it bleeds, it leads things in the, the mainstream media where if something's traumatic and scary and dramatic and um, involves mayhem, that's what people pay attention to. And you can sort of blame the, the you know, you can complain about the news being like, you know, sensationalist and stuff, but it's also just what people pay attention to. Like that's, that's the story because the other stuff, the nice, happy, everybody getting along stuff is kind of boring. It's fun. It's better stuff. That's how more of the world should be. But if you're telling a story, that's kind of boring. Um, so the people who, Kim and Todd, who are friends of ours, who made this series, they tell the story and the interesting parts of the story involve the drama and the conflict because that's just, that's more interesting than everybody getting along fine. Um, and that's part of why it's you see the, the silly headlines from the mainstream media of like it this they were looking for paradise, but it descended into hell. And the vast majority of people who've been to Anarchapolka would be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like I was there the whole time. I must have missed the descending into hell part. I had a fun time. And there was no violence and there was no any of that. Um but it depends where you focus. And when you're telling a story, you focus on things that are like noteworthy and lots of people sitting around having fun is not noteworthy. It's how the world should be, but it's not all that noteworthy or interesting. So of course the story is going to focus on where there is drama. Now, when it comes to that stuff, there's people who know me know I'm basically a anti-social <laughs> free. Well, the, people keep correcting me. A social is the proper term. It's not that I hate people, it's that mostly I avoid them precisely because people have so many dramas and interpersonal conflicts and, and you know, things that come up that aren't about ideas that matter and they're not about, like, projects that are important. It's just sort of like personality conflicts and priorities and preferences. And that happened at Anarchopoco as it happens at like almost every event. There are some people who are like, well, we would prefer sort of a more informal hippie-ish, anyone can do a talk and they just schedule it and do it like this. And that's what Anarcho Forco was. And then there's people like, no, we want the, a very structured, like we decide who the speakers are. So it's, it's hierarchical, voluntarily hierarchical. And the thing is, I, I totally see the value in both of those, and I totally see why there's conflict between the two when somebody's complaining, well, I wanted, I, you know, we want the event to be this. Well, we want the event to be this. And it's like, well, yeah, but that's just your preference. That's And, and I have my preferences, too. I'm not saying don't have preferences. I'm saying, well, of course that's going to happen. Like, if it isn't your event, they're probably going to do things that you like aren't in line with what you have done if it would have been your event. And that's true of literally everything. It's true of, from my vantage point, it's true of Anarchapolco. It's true of Anarchaforco. It's true of literally every freedom event and, and organization I've ever like spoken in front of. And there's some that were real, like Porkfest in New Hampshire was really cool. Porcupine Freedom Festival. 
And I was there for years and years and years. And then I was like, oh, they're getting political. I'm going somewhere else. So I intentionally stay sort of freelance. Like I'm not going to get too emotionally attached to any event or organization or anything because I'm about the ideas and what I think is important and what doesn't mean you have to think that's what what's important. But I focus on what I think is important. And if I see an event and think, yeah, that's a way for me to help get out what I think I need to get out, then I'll go along with it. And if it crashes and burns or goes in some other direction, I'll be like, oh, well, it was fun while it lasted. Let's go over here. Um, and But so often people have their conflicting ideas and just their personality differences fabricates problems that don't really need to be there. And that's why, for the most part, I just do my own thing. I don't have, like, formal alliances with the national organization of blah, 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 whatever. I don't care. Like, I've written for a billion different publications. I've done talks in front of a billion different um, organizations and events and, and things all over the place. But I, I expect this sort of personal drama that I just find annoying and, and counterproductive, but it, it makes a story, it makes an interesting story. And the, the, the evolution of Anarch Polko is a fine example. And Kim and Todd are doing an awesome job, not only of telling the story of stuff that went on there, um, but of showing the actual philosophy behind it. And then the personal stuff on top of that that happens. And the personal stuff on top of that, mostly I could, you know, I could do without, just uh, whatever. And the thing is, we're still friends with people on both sides of sort of the divide of, of the vision of how it should be done. Because we can see value in each and we can, and, and I have complaints with both sides. Like, and, and this, like... When I say I have complaints, this doesn't mean they should have done it differently. This just means if I had been in charge, here's what I would have done differently. But I wasn't, so who cares what I would have done? Like, there was a lot of focus on the, the crypto stuff and the, the Bitcoin stuff because there's a lot of people involved who are very much into that. And that's their interest. And that's perfectly fine. That They're not bad because their interests don't exactly match mine. I, I think cryptos are an awesome way to undermine the state. I've never really been into them. I've never played the game. I've, I mean, I support the the idea completely. I just never, I, I'm not one of the ones who became a gazillionaire when Bitcoin launched. I'm one of the ones who's like, yeah, I used to have some of those back when they were worth $3 each. Oh, well, bummer. <laughs> and so there's nothing wrong with people having a conference about crypto and, and how to plan ahead and how to do stuff. And like, that's perfectly fine. That's not my focus. Doesn't mean it shouldn't be other people's focus. Just means it's not my focus. And so when there's a Bitcoin, you know, a big focus on Bitcoin, and I'll say a few words about it because I support the idea, but that's not my main focus. So other people can go do a thing that focuses on that. And I'm fine with that. I just might not be part of that part of it because I don't have that much of value to say about it. And that's not really my focus. And then there are people on the other side. I mean, it's not as simple as sides, but you know what I mean? Of sort of the the more free-for-all, non-hierarchical, more hippie-leaning. I, I, I'm not trying to use hippie as an insult, um, but you probably know what I mean. A way more informal get-together. And I think there are a bunch of awesome things about that. And I think there's a bunch of things that people talk about and and stuff that I think they're just dead wrong about and I just well oh well like they're allowed to say that I'm not gonna try to stop them from saying what they think I might say if I disagree with them or not um but when it becomes a personal thing like well now there's this event and I want this important event to match my preferences and values well it's not gonna like, unless you're the one person in charge, it's not going to. It might pretty much. It might not at all. It might a little bit. And if people think, well, I got my hopes up because I thought it was going to be this, and now I wish it was this, so let's make one. It's like, that's fine. Like, all the different ways you can do something, be my guest. But, of course, it turns into drama because people naturally think, well, my way of doing it is better than your way of doing it. Well, no, my way of it is better than yours. And it doesn't even mean that everybody's way is equally as good, but people have different priorities. And instead of arguing over which the thing should have been, th this is why I don't, I, I don't like the notion of a movement, even an organization, even a, an event and like an ongoing annual event, 
I'm not going to get too attached to it because it's almost certainly going to go in a direction I don't really care about, or maybe even a direction I all the way oppose, um, which isn't the case with Anarchapulco, but it has been with other things. And so it's just, well, people are going to be people and they're going to disagree about how to do things. And, and I have my agenda and I have my ideas and I have the things I care about and the things I focus on. And when it happens to like sort of match somebody else's agenda, I may be with them for a while, you know, helping out and I'll speak at this and whatever. And, um, and if it doesn't, whatever, I go my own way. And so the drama to me, it's an interesting story, stuff that happened along Anarchapulco. And to me, it's also a little bit annoying and frustrating, but predictably so, because people are people and people do this. And so I'm constantly like, oh, I just, I don't, I don't want to deal with the stupid human drama. I want to focus on the message and the ideas and stuff. But, you know, where there are a bunch of people, there's going to be drama. There's going to be disagreement, even if they're not stupid. Like, and, and I'm in the position of watching people that I know and care about on a bunch of different sides who sort of get mad at each other and have disagreements. And sometimes I try to be sort of, arbiter <laughs> in between um and sometimes i just oh well whatever like you two like argue about it you two you five you hundred whatever argue back and forth i just i don't like i want to focus on something i think is more productive so there's that whole element and that's the main thing i also wanted to add you know if there are people are people and if there are anarchists who are pointing to the second episode and going oh this is making us look bad um this is reality. This is a true story that Kim and Todd didn't make something up to try to make anarchists look bad. And it doesn't make you look bad for someone else to be bonkers. Um, and I'm talking mainly about um, Paul, who went by Paul Proper. And I knew him a little bit. And Amanda knew him a little bit more even. Um, and it's sad because he was off his freaking rocker to the point of being unstable and delusional and dangerous and yet i think down inside there was something that really cared about the truth now how did he get that way there is no mystery if you know him in his history how he got that way by being in the military now i don't know exactly what evil crap he witnessed or did or was a part of um, but he was definitely traumatized and just emotionally and psychologically wrecked by being a pawn of the state. And he says that, and he explains that. Um, and you could see that, like I, I had a few little, you know, online exchanges with him, trying to talk him down from being a psycho at points and trying to even figure out what the hell his brain was thinking and what he was imagining was happening was, was a challenge. So it's, it's, it's really sad to watch what could have been a perfectly decent person crumble into this just complete mess that's then a threat to himself and others around him. And it's, I, I don't even know the details of, of what happened. Um, I won't, I won't give a spoiler, but I can't give a spoiler because I don't even know what happened, but I know Paul was a complete mess and he did things he definitely should have. He did not good things. He did not good things in the military. I don't know exactly what they were, but he admits he did not good things in the military. Um, and then his behavior to a lot of people afterwards, people that I know was very not good. Um, and his own delusions about, you know, trying to imagine himself to be this righteous warrior fighting against some injustice. And half the time he can't even say what it is. And like, you might just be hallucinating it. And now you're a threat to somebody based on your own hallucinations. That's really messed up and you need to be careful. And so that was sad, but it really happened. It's part of the story. And some of the quotes they use from Paul are pretty profound and shows that deep down inside, there still was a soul and a brain that was trying to be on the right side. And on top of that, it was really friggin' messed up. Um, and that's a reality. And it's a reality of PTSD. Like it wasn't voluntarism that made him into that. It was absolutely being a member of the military, which he knows and admits and describes. Um, so the, to tell that story, which is a true story, like to say, oh, you, you shouldn't have, uh, nobody's phrased it like this that I've seen. Well, you shouldn't have told that story because 
having people associate that with anarchism is like, we don't want to look like Paul because he was off his freaking rocker. It's like, yeah, but he was a person who was off his freaking rocker as a result of being in the military and the PTSD. And then he tried to go to voluntarism and it didn't entirely work because by then his, his grasp over his own brain was failing and his grasp of reality was failing. And it was just really sad all around. But that's, that's the truth. That's what happened. And so uh, I know it's, temp you know, as much as anarchists get demonized and mischaracterized in the media, I can completely understand why people who believe that want to put their, their best foot forward. They want to look as good as they can because they're up against being constantly demonized. And so some people are sort of complaining, like, well, this doesn't make us look all that, like the opening scene of the book burning. I've seen some people complain about it. And first of all, they didn't bother to note the intentional irony and flippancy in what was being burned. It wasn't, here's a book that nobody should ever read. It was, here's the, the, the legislative law books that were burning to symbolically say, screw you, you're not in charge of us. We don't, it, it's, you know, it's the Boston Tea Party only more relevant because like, it's not the tea's fault. <laughs> you're blaming the tea, but it's just sort of a little the fun symbolic thing. But a lot of people are like, oh, book burning, that represents, ah, oh, you can't be seen doing that. Um, and kids who swear, like lots of people who, like can't handle that. That's really offensive and it wouldn't have been my <laughs> choice of what to show first. And I know people with very different attitudes about that. It's like, yeah, they're going to, you know, they're going to hear it anyway, especially in this culture. We're not going to pretend that you're a bad person if you make. So I understand both sides, even when I don't agree with both sides, even if I disagree with both sides. But that's how people are. That's what people do. And this is a very human story that Kim and Todd are telling about actual human beings. And a number of them don't survive to the end of the story. And it's a it's a fascinating and interesting story. So I would I would ask all the people who are actually voluntarists to be patient with the fact that, yeah, it doesn't make us look perfect because we're not and because nobody is. And there's a bunch of people who gravitate towards anarchism who already are kind of off their rockers in various ways. And I've explained before how any movement that goes against the mainstream is necessarily going to attract more than its fair share of freaks and weirdos. And I, I include myself in the category of freaks and weirdos. I don't particularly feel like I fit in the mainstream. That's just going to happen. And to pretend that, no, we're all like successful and well-educated and normal, like, no, we're not, because we is thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people now. It's in the hundreds of thousands who are voluntarists now. And no, we're not all normal and educated and successful. Like, a lot more of those people are in there, but their story is mostly boring. <laughs> so it's not worth telling. It's worth knowing about. It's worth striving for. But the story that's actually interesting is often about the people who who have conflict and have problems and are traumatized and are damaged and, you know, all, all that stuff. So I, like, I hate, I, even when it was happening, I hated to see different groups of, of voluntaries getting mad at each other just because they would have done something differently. And, and then complaining that, oh, we don't, we don't look like we're all on the same page and we're all perfect and yeah, it's cause we're not, and we're not <laughs> like, that's just reality, but it's telling a real story. And we're, we're only two episodes in, there's six episodes. Um, and the, I have reason to believe you really get to more of the, the substance and humanity in coming episodes. And of course they always do the teaser thing. And I, I have to just chuckle at it because they end every episode um, with some reference that's gonna make the viewer go, what, what, what happened? To watch the next one. That's that's just what you do when you make a film. And sometimes it's a tease that's a misdirect. It's making you think, wait, does that mean, uh? And then you learn, oh, no, this is how that happened. That, but that's just that's just good filmmaking is to keep somebody's attention. Um, but they don't lie about anything. And they're not making stuff up. And so I, I wish people could just, like, this This doesn't fix the whole world and it doesn't end the whole world. This is this is a show, and it's a very well-done show about the story and the underlying philosophy that brought a bunch of very different people together. And I hope people can just sort of, voluntarists and anarchists can just sort of sit back and watch it and enjoy the fact that, okay, now it's part of the discussion. 
This is on HBO. This is freaking huge. This is part of the national discussion. It's people seeing, and they can go, yeah, that guy's sort of bonkers. And I look at him, you know, Paul, and go, yeah, he was sort of bonkers. It's sad. He was totally sort of bonkers. And they can look at different sides and go, yeah, they're, they're too focused on money. And some people think that. And they can go, well, they're not organized enough. Or, you know, you can think whatever the hell you want. And that's, that's what people do when they watch stories about other people. And so just... Just let it be and enjoy what it is and realize how important it is that of all the 80 gazillion stories going on out there, like of all the reality TV where it's just superficial imbeciles being jackasses at each other and that's what people is watching, wouldn't you rather than be watching a story about people who, yeah, they're not infallible, they have their flaws, they have their disagreements, they have their conflict, and in the meantime, they're talking about stuff that matters. You have a discussion of the creature from Jekyll Island. Has that ever been mentioned on HBO before? I doubt it. You have discussions about self-ownership and non-aggression and a stateless society in the middle of this story about people being people. That is monumental. And so don't, don't, what is it, miss the forest for the trees or whatever the heck the saying is. Like, this is really dang good that this is happening, even if it's portraying imperfect human beings, which is all of us, having disagreements and some of them being off their rockers, which is some of us. This, the fact that it's a story, this isn't like, well, this is the only chance we're ever going to get to represent anarchism, so we better, like, be on our best behavior and all, like, tighten our ties and stuff. No, it's one story. It's an important story. It's a cool story. It's a well-told story. But it's one story. This isn't the end. This is the beginning of this discussion happening in the mainstream. And I've said for years, when this discussion starts to happen in the mainstream, that is when the world will change so much faster than most people can even imagine. Faster than I could imagine 10 or 20 years ago. And it's happening. The discussion is now in the mainstream. And that's thanks in large part to Kim and Todd doing such an awesome job telling this human story that happens to involve these very important concepts. So yes, this is absolutely a win in every way, even though some of the anarchists shown are, you know, they disagree, they have squabbles, they have opinions that I think are kind of eh, and some of them are downright unstable and dangerous. And it's still an absolute win that this is getting in front of a lot of people who've never heard this stuff before. So relax. This isn't the end of the world. This isn't the beginning of the world. But it is a big step towards these things becoming a mainstream discussion. And that is the step that I've been dreaming of seeing for 26 years. Now it's happening. Discussion is going to be ugly. It's going to be confusing. It's going to be embarrassing and stupid in parts because that's how people are. But it has started and you don't get to the whole world understanding these obvious things until the discussion starts in the mainstream. And it just did.